Now we're going to talk about hypoglycemia, hyperglycemia, causes, symptoms, and treatments. The easier and the more effective you treat it, the less of a pain it'll be. Okay, now topic two, hypo and hyperglycemia. It's important to go over this stuff as part of the overall understanding of what's involved in managing diabetes on a daily basis. So, hypoglycemia is just a fancy name for saying low blood sugar. You can call it whatever you want, but a lot of times it's not fun. <laughs> One of the causes of low blood sugar is too much insulin. And what you need to know is, is that this is all relative. It's not, there's no such thing as too much insulin unless it's bringing your blood sugar down. But relatively speaking, you could have too much insulin on board. Or the other flip side to that is not enough food. Let's say you took some insulin before breakfast and all of a sudden you had to leave the house, you had to leave in a rush and you could only eat half of your meal. That would mean not enough food or too much insulin. Flip sides of the same coin. Or exercise not covered, meaning when we exercise, exercise is a thing that brings your blood sugar down. When we exercise, usually we need to take an extra snack to cover the amount of exercise that we're doing. So, exercise not covered. Um, and that's basically, those are the sort of main causes for low blood sugar. What are the symptoms? Well, those vary from person to person, and they can even vary from person to person and change over time. When I first got diagnosed, I used to have a lot of feelings around numbness around my lips. Some people feel shaky. Other people sweat. Some people get blurry vision. Little kids have a sudden change of mood. And you could become disoriented. What's important to know is, is that these symptoms are a signal from our brain that uses glucose to function that we need more glucose and we need it immediately. Cool. So what is the treatment for low blood sugars? Quick acting carbohydrates. So glucose tablets You'll get used to those. They come in various flavors, some good, some bad, but about four of them will work for you. Those work the, effect, the most, uh, the quickest for me, and they're the most effective. And my other favorite treatment, which works for a lot of us, are Skittles, about 20 of them, right? Or Jelly Bellies. What's better about the glucose tablets that don't taste so great over the Skittles that taste awesome and are probably one of the best inventions to ever hit the planet, as well as Jelly Bellies, is that the glucose tablets you're not going to want more of. I find it very hard to restrain myself to 20 Jelly Bellies or 20 Skittles. But if you have the emotional wherewithal to restrain yourself or you have a partner or you have a parent around, just sort of doling out exactly how many you need, you could use those things. So those are all available. You can use, also use orange juice. You can also, if you're Canadian, use maple syrup. Anything that is available to you to jack your blood sugar up quickly is what we're talking about. All right? Cool. Now, some things that you need to know about low blood sugars. As a kid with diabetes, it's your responsibility to keep in your book bag some of those treatments for the low blood sugars. And why is that? Because sometimes when you're on the road or when you're in school or with your friends, it's impossible to get to a candy machine. Or you might not have any change. And it's always possible that your blood sugars will go low. It's sort of a sign that you're in tight control and good control if you have two or three mild low blood sugars in a week. That is not unreasonable, all right? 
And so what we're talking about is being prepared for them in the most appropriate way, which is to always carry some glucose tablets or some quick acting carb and to have access to it so that whenever you need it, you can use it. I keep a bag of Skittles in my car. I have a bunch of glucose tablets in my briefcase that I take to work. I um, have Jelly Bellies stashed in various places in my office and in my desk. What I'm saying is, is that low blood sugars usually happen if you have diabetes, not a lot, and you know, they're a little frustrating, but you wanna make sure that wherever you are, you've got what you need to take care of them, all right? The symptoms are basically your brain saying, dude, I need a little sugar. And the numbness around the lips, the shakiness, the sweating, the blurry vision, these are all neurological signs that your brain is sending to you, saying, dude, let's get us some sugar here. I'm giving you some warning, get it together. And that's basically it. You shouldn't feel like getting a low blood sugar means that you're not doing a good job. It just means that you overshot it or undershot it in terms of food or overshot it in terms of exercise and didn't cover it adequately. Bottom line is what you want to do is do what you need to do to take care of it and then move on and try and figure out why it happened. That's basically the sort of guiding principle for low blood sugars. And one more thing, which is the most important thing, is the rule of 15. I know you say, dude, I'm not interested in more rules. I got a lot of rules. I got to manage this thing. It's just a way of saying, check your blood sugar before to make sure that you're low. Sometimes you can confuse the symptoms. If you're 70 or below, take 15 grams of carbohydrate, wait 15 minutes and check again. Why? Because all of us with diabetes know that sometimes what ends up happening is that even when our blood sugar keeps coming, comes back up, and we're back at um, 90 or 5.0, we still feel symptomatic. It takes a while for the symptoms to go away. And what the rule of 15 helps us with is to make sure that we stay on track and treat the blood sugar, not the symptom. That's key to sort of managing blood sugars effectively because what you don't want to do is go really low, over-treat it with 400 Skittles because you're starving to death, then have your blood sugar go all the way up, have to take some insulin to bring it down, then go low again, blah. You get my point? There's a certain amount which the rule of 15 sort of outlines for us. Check your blood sugar to make sure you're low. Take 15 grams of carbohydrate, which is about four glucose tablets, 20 Skittles, 30 ounces of juice, two tablespoons of maple syrup. Wait 15 minutes. Don't keep on stuffing your face. And then in 15 minutes, check again to see where you are. If you manage it this way, it'll, your ma overall management will be a lot smoother. And like I said, I'm not trying to come off as holier than thou, but the bottom line is, is that, uh, look, all of us fall into a thing where we just would kill for a jelly bean and we just keep on overdoing it. But what we want to make sure about is, is that we're checking, 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 and that we're not overdoing it to the best of our ability, which is, goes for all of the stuff that we're talking about, doing the best that you can and sort of letting go of the results. Cool. The one last thing that I wanted to mention about hypoglycemia is, is that for all of us with type 1 diabetes, you must check your blood sugar before getting into a car. Why? Because if you're low while you're driving, it's sort of the same thing as like being a drunk driver. I never get into my car behind the driver's seat unless I'm 80 <clears throat> or 4.4 
and above. That's just a standard rule that parents have to apply to their teens who are learning to drive. And for those of us with type 1 who are adults who drive already, that is just a responsibility that we have not only to ourselves, but as well as being responsible to others who we share the road with, for us and for others. If you're feeling low, what you want to do is pull your car over to the side of the road and check your blood sugar and stop and wait until your blood sugar comes back up to a normal level. You don't want to be driving and being um, in the midst of a low blood sugar. You want to make sure of that. Okay? Cool. The next part of the hypohyperglycemia is hyperglycemia, or, as the name implies, high blood sugar. What are some of the causes of high blood sugar? Well, yeah, it's quite the opposite of low blood It's just the opposite of low blood sugar. Not enough insulin, for whatever reason. Too much food, meaning you ate a lot and you didn't cover it adequately with enough insulin. You could be ill. Getting sick will throw your diabetes out of whack because it's stress. And speaking of stress, stress or emotions and let's say strong emotions because i don't want anybody to get the impression that having diabetes you can't feel that's not true at all but strong emotions like anger rage some people even for sadness right makes their blood sugar go up all right those are some of the causes what are some of the symptoms of high blood sugar well they're similar to what you felt when you first got diagnosed when your blood sugars were really high you can feel thirsty or dry mouth you can feel lethargic which you can also feel when your blood sugar is low that's why it's important to check you can have blurry vision what ends up happening is that as your blood sugar goes up it changes the um, it dilates things in your eyes in such a way that you could become a little have a blurry vision. Um, maybe peeing a lot because the body's trying to dump the extra sugar, remember? And the one treatment, and really the best treatment for high blood sugars on the spot and also to prevent them from happening, is more insulin. Now some people say, well, if exercise brings my blood sugar down, why don't I exercise a little bit more? Well, the thing about that is that you have to be careful about that because sometimes if your sugar is already high and you exercise, what will happen is that you'll jack your blood sugar up even more because the body's in stress. So you got to be careful about that. Talk to your doctors and your nurses about how to manage that. But it happens a lot of times that, well, I thought that if I exercise, I'm, if I'm high, I should go and exercise and bring it down. Well, sometimes the opposite happens, and you exercise, and it actually makes it go up more because of your lack of insulin, which is what the high blood sugar is saying. It's saying that we need more insulin. Cool. Okay, so that covers the topic of hypo and hyperglycemia, causes symptoms and treatment. Next time we'll be talking about adjusting insulin doses, and we'll be talking about all of the different components that go into putting it all together. We'll be talking about insulin to carb ratios, we'll be talking about insulin sensitivity factors, how you can actually do the calculations for that, and we will be talking about tweaking and adjusting insulin doses based on blood sugar results using those separate components.